Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another weekly gambling review. This time, a new gamble in the form of the Vickers MBT that is available in the shop in gambling crates right here. Obviously, 60,000 gold for 30 charms to obtain this vehicle is never gonna make it worth it, but more on this vehicle a little bit later. First, we're gonna have to look at the rest of the gambling shop right here. The mystery boxes are now out in full force, and the drop chance for the KPZ07PE is still 1 in 2,000. So you're more likely to be run over by a femboy in a tank than to actually obtain this tank. The resources right here, we're gonna... The individual offers are individual. They're all cheap. If you want them, get them. It doesn't really matter. If you need a little bit, get them. If you don't, don't. Then, the resources. A lot of times fives. 50 is about enough to grind through a whole tech tray. And I think 4,650 gold for that is an okay price if you need the times five. If you really want to grind the next tank, then that can be somewhat worth it if you have nothing better to spend your gold on. If you already have the good premium tanks that you need, because you only need about five to ten premium tanks to actually get through all your credit grinding without it getting boring. The tank section this week is also very straightforward. We have something... That is essentially a meme bundle right here. The IS-2 shield, it is nothing special. It just plays like a regular IS-2. If you've played the IS on your way to the IS-7, you exactly know how this one plays, and you have no need for this vehicle, unless you specifically want to earn credits with a clone of the IS. That is just a slightly li little bit better. And uh, you also hate having the maximum credit yield, because obviously the most credits you make at Tier 8 and all at Tier 7, so buying a Tier 7 and a Tier 6 to make credits is nonsensical. So, these are collector vehicles, the SU-100Y is a meme tank. If you want to collect these vehicles, then you can purchase them for that, but there is no serious point in obtaining these vehicles, whether it be to have fun or to make credits. There are much better options out there, even though the SU-100Y with its funky gun can be a lot of fun. It is also extremely frustrating due to its massive size, non-existent armor, and very mediocre mobility. So, it is fun. Sometimes. But not all the time. Not often. Then we have the Lurvy right here for 8,500 gold. So Wargaming has completely lost it now because these bundles used to be 5.5k. So congratulations on that. These times fives are, however, unlocked, which adds a little bit of extra value, a little bit of extra compensation right here. Maybe that's why it's so expensive. But obviously there is no credits and no premium time in this bundle, which is what was usual for the 5.5k bundles that the Lurvy was also sold in. Obviously a camouflage. Two camouflages here don't add any value, in my opinion, because they're simply cosmetics that don't change anything about the tank except the look, and the look doesn't make you get more credits or make you have better teammates or any of that. Just, I don't add any value for camouflages being added to bundles, but Wargaming can do that to sell you the bundles for more money. Obviously, the free XP boosters are also very useful in combination with the Lurve, which is a very OG premium tank. And it still sort of holds up a little bit. It has a very high credit coefficient for what it is. So using this in combination with the credit boosters can get you a lot of credits done. But obviously, it is nowhere near the upper tiers of premium tanks. I personally would not recommend it in this bundle and in this configuration. And uh, then we have the T-54 first prototype and the ICU-130, both of which are... Uh, Bad choices. This vehicle used to be good in 2015, but now it is completely left over from that time, and there is no point in ever obtaining this vehicle. There are much better pre premium medium tanks out there as well. And the ISU-130 combines the downsides of the ISU-152, that is slow mobility and no armor, with the downsides of not having the BL-10, which is arguably very high DPM, though but a gun that has a lot less penetration and a lot less alpha damage than the almighty BL-10, which is what makes the ISU-152 special in the first place. And obviously, the less mobile you are, the less armor you have, and the less flexible you are, the less you want to peek, right? Because the more often you have to peek, the more often you're exposed to the enemy. And uh, obviously, you can sit at the back with this kind of vehicle, but it's not very fun to play that anyway, so... This is a downgrade compared to the ISU 152, and I don't recommend purchasing it whatsoever. And the Invisible Menace, I already talked about that last week. 13,500 is a joke for what's in this bundle. Don't buy that whatsoever. And the 268 TS5, it's 54 euros. Like, you can get a lot of pizzas for that. Just think about this. What do you rather have? Six pizzas or an Object 268 version 4? I'll take the pizzas. 
Now, there are two ways to obtain the Vickers MBT. The first one, obviously, that anyone with a little bit of marketing and math knowledge will immediately see through. That is the crate version, where you have to pay 60,000 gold to get the vehicle for sure, because obviously you need 30 charms to get the tank. Five crates, 10,000, adds up to 60,000 gold to buy the entire vehicle. Obviously, you will be able to get a, a single certificate for 28,000 free XP because the job chances for these are also no good. It's a 4%, so you're gonna be just as likely to get one of these as you are to get the tank. You're not getting anything much of value besides that, and for 60,000 gold, that is simply not good enough. Obviously, the tank itself, it's a fine tank. If it comes in the shop for six, 7,000 gold, like, let's see, go down here, put the Vickers MPT in here, in place of the T3 first prototype. Hey, I'll recommend it for that price. But there is a second option, and it's not to directly sell it. It is a subscription. Now, here is the catch about the subscription. If you read down here, if you scroll all the way down, please note, if you miss any days, you'll irretrievably miss the associate certificate parts as well. Which means if you miss a single one of these 10 days, you have just paid 30 euros for 10 mystery boxes. That is proper evil. And it says it right there at the bottom. Like, it doesn't even say it at the start. There's no big disclaimer. It says it right here in the same font down there all the way at the bottom. Now, this vehicle only really has one thing that is quite solid at, and that is its 320 alpha damage. Because 190 standard penetration, 2200 DPM, 0.33 accuracy, 8 degrees of gun depression, and a power to weight ratio of roughly 18, which is somewhere in the middle of medium tanks, and then the armor on the turret, which is quite solid, but that is the case for a Centurion 5-1 as well, for example. And there is somebody that actually spent money on that vehicle. Loy. Now, let's see what we can do. Obviously, the Capola on top is massive, as you just saw, and can be pinned very easily. So all the turret armor you have doesn't mean anything if the enemy is very accurate. Now, let's see what we can get out of this one right here. Obviously, the enemy Vickers is also playing the correct spot here, playing the middle, playing the hull down positions where you use your gun depression. So, let's see what's going to happen here. Obviously, it's not very nice that he's also there because that means I'm going to have to deal with him. Um, but we have all the other guys over there, which should be fine to deal with. I mean, it does have good HE rounds. It is British, after all. So, that is another upside. Uh, the alpha damage of the gun is quite solid. Uh, but the penetration, especially in the standard rounds, is bad, and the DPM itself is also not very good whatsoever, especially compared to a lot of heavy tanks as well. So, let's see if we can... Nope. Be careful there, because there's a smasher over there. So basically, the entire enemy team is over there, so that would be... It would be time for the T-77 to move around, attack the Vickers from the back, so that I can swoop around and attack him. But that's obviously not going to happen, because... Uh, your, your chance of getting a good team is even lower than your chance of getting that tank out of a crate. So let's see what I do about here. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to play on the alpha damage, going to play on the 9 second reload. And uh, every time the gun is reloaded, take a very precise shot. Try and do something about it because th this team is already collapsing quite badly. And the Smasher is coming up the back. Turn around now, take the Smasher. I hope the Vickers MBT is held back enough from the threat of the T-71, he seems to be. Hello, Smasher, and nice. I did get lucky there, because obviously 320 alpha damage. RNG means I had a 50% chance of killing him, but I got lucky there. And now I'm gonna have to go over there and help the uh, T-71 against the Vickers, because the Vickers is isolated, and obviously I have no interest in going over there and bailing out a disadvantage. I always want to drive into the advantage. Right, because obviously if I go over there and make a 2v3, a 3v3, we haven't gained anything. We're just not losing as badly. But here on this side, I can actually help uh, the T-71. I can uh, help him survive, and I can take out the Vickers and keep the T-71 alive as well. Because those two guys over there, they're probably going to die anyway by the time I arrive. So, here we go. He's obviously going to wait for me, and now he's dead. Check the hit points. T-28 is a big problem. Tiger can be a one-shot, should be a one-shot, should be the priority right here. I do believe the T-34-3 is also relatively healthy, uh, which is obviously not very nice. And obviously, if I would have driven over there, those two guys on my team would have died anyway. And I would have just gotten wrecked now. But now, I have the distance between me and them. Obviously, I have to stay out of the B-cap here to not amount to my position. And there is a T-34, and that is not very good. I'm going to try to put him on the track here and now disappear. Uh, try and get the advantage, get that shot out. The T-28 won't be able to 
uh, get over here in time to disturb this fight. So I'm going to have to uh, be careful with that. But obviously the tiger can. But the tiger will now be taken out by, hopefully, the 271. Going to have to disappear. TM28 did get his ass going, so he has now arrived. Now 324, which means I have a sub 50% chance of taking out that T34. So I'm going to have to disappear. And obviously the T28 is not a vehicle that cannot catch me. And uh, even though this is not the most mobile of medium tanks in the world, it is still mobile just enough uh, to get over there. Now, I know the T-34 is in the cap, up in the cap, so I'm going to try to take the distance, go around the outside and catch him off guard from the side, just like that. And he used the HU round to penetrate his side. Okay, now, T-28 Defender cannot kill me with one shot unless he gets lucky because he has 400 alpha damage. I have 423 uh, hit points. Which now means I can snipe the Coppola or shoot at him when he turns to the side. And now we have that T-71 over there that is keeping this guy in check. I can also take another shot here. Doesn't quite hit. But that now means that he is within range of being killed by me if the T-71 gets another shot. I'm going to try to distract him here. Um, that's fine. HE shot. He has a 7 second intro clip reload, which means I will be able to get another shot. He is now pushing down, which is a dumb idea, because he now knows that I'm right here. Um, so I have no idea what the hell that position was, but now he's tracked. And I'm going to go for the premium round here. He won't be able to turn in time. And that is now four kills for me, just like that. Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> See, this is why I don't play the game anymore. It's too damn easy. <laughs> anyway, 4,000 damage. I'm going to play another one anyway. Already played one. That was 3k damage. Let's play another one. All right, number two. And uh, it is tier seven battle again. And obviously this is a press account. So the teams are noob matchmaking. So there's not really any praise to be gained from beating up noobs. But let's do that anyway. All right, they have a singular light tank, which means domination up here should be inevitable, especially with the HE rounds against the T49. That should be just about fine. Oh, here's the ICU-152. Can't take a shot there. And now we're going to have to be very careful. Because that ICU-152 is going to be very dangerous. And here comes an E-25 with his DPM. And that is not going to be very nice. Because the Swindler is now going to die. Obviously, I'm not going to jump over there to help him. Because he's dead anyway. So that's a waste of my own hit points. What I want to do here is get this uh, ICU out. Going to ensure that with the AG round. And now uh, I do have two tank destroyers behind me backing me up, which means I will be able to hold this position. Uh, the T-49 does not have the derp gun, but instead the 90mm 2.25 Alpha gun, which means that uh, this should be quite easy to pull off, actually. And uh, G around, a G around. There's an E-25 down there. I can peek that guy. doesn't really matter. It's 400 damage. I can kill him with the next shot. Just got to wait nine seconds. There's four people down there. Are we missing anybody? I think we're missing... No, we're not missing anybody. There's four down here, one up here. Which means the T-49 is now the weak point of the enemy team. And he's now running away. Look at that. 400 HE damage. That's what's good about this vehicle. Right? You've got nice alpha damage. You've got good HE rounds. The standard penetration on the APCR sucks. But the HE is quite good. So, track him as well. He's now stuck. And now that means I can block him as well from getting out. And he can't really do that much damage. So, I can just do that. Ram him into a wall, aim my HE, and boom. Absolutely annihilated. And now, well, this game's won, basically. The only threat really is the Action X, um, but he can be dealt with as well. Just gonna take care of the Black Prince here. HE is not enough to go through the side of that. Here's the thing if you don't know the exact HE penetration, or just test it, right? You, you lose nothing from switching the HE and going back quickly. If the enemy's out in the open like that. You lose absolutely nothing from that. So, obviously, if they're quickly moving past you, then there's no point in trying to do that because you're just going to lose uh, the shot. But if you can take your time, just check it. Just see if it works. It might. Okay. There you now YOLOing forward, which is not really great, but the E-10s aren't particularly mobile. I have enough third armor to be semi-safe up here. And that guy's just sitting out in the open. Uh, he's going to be a very free kill. Uh, unless he retreats, which he did. And now, what I'm going to do is uh, I want to take out the E10 and the Black Prince to get a advantage against the Action X here later. Black Prince only has like 160 alpha damage, I think, so he's not going to be a threat. I can just drive past him uh, right here. 
And uh, the hit points that I lose in the meanwhile aren't going to be that big of a problem. Let's take another shot because he repositioned wrongly. And now we have the action X up there in somewhat of a pincer. And I want to go around the E10 here, attack him from the back. Right, you would never want to be where the enemy wants you to be. But that is now lovely because the E10 is already dead, which means now I can just drive around the action X from the back. And uh, he will not be able to defend against me while being vulnerable to the SMV and the ammo. Obviously, they are both low now, so I'm going to have to be careful. He's driving forward, so I'm going to hold the angle. There we go. Another shot in. The most important thing here is I get him low enough to be able to trade. Because obviously I can out-trade him with his little 190 alpha damage gun. Um, but obviously, he could do the DPM fight on me. So I want to do trading here. And uh, that's exactly what I want, because now he's on 313, which is basically a 90% chance of the next shot killing him if it pens. And now I'm going to drive away from here. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play this house right here, because he saw me go this direction, which now means I'm going to set up here and wait if he's going to poke out. Because currently it's supremacy, so I have the point advantage. Uh, he has to take A um, or C, because he already has B. So, there is not much to gain here from him. Okay, he's very slow. But, um... Yeah, disappear now. Because the only thing I have to do now is not let him get close to me. Not let him get close to me. We're going to turn again. See if it works. Oh, know how to drive properly as well. Yeah. Him rushing me is a bad idea. <laughs> that is dumb. Alright. Well, that's another 4 kills, 4,000 damage, I think. I don't know. I kind of I kind of sold the tank too well, didn't I? Kind of sold it way too well. You you now want it, don't you? You now want the tank. But don't worry. That's not the tank being excellent. That's noob matchmaking and 10 years of experience. So it works. It's a fine tank. But it's not worth it in crates. The same fucking verdict as every crate tank. It's fine, but don't buy it because it's in crates. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one. Goodbye.